Well, it's a big day for us today. We, uh, we've we got the tractor here. So uh, the boys were actually uh, nice and early this morning. They even beat me to work, so I couldn't film it driving in, but here we go, we get to film it coming off. But uh, yeah, so today we're gonna, um, yeah, we've got Ash coming out, the salesman, he's gonna drive us, well, walk us through everything on this, and we'll, uh, yeah, get our knowledge up on the tractor. So we'll go for a proper walk around uh, in a bit, but I uh, thought I'd show you guys the cab, so it's the exciting part. This is uh, the glass cage. This is where you know, everyone's gonna be sitting. So we've got their, uh, whatever they call their screen. So that's the, the case screen that controls everything on the tractor. And then we've got our, uh, our John Deere screen. So obviously that's for steering. And then this one down here is our X35. And that one there is for the air seater. So that controls the Borgo. So, yeah, we've got a few screens in here, but I think it's actually better viewing out there than what it was with Art. If you guys remember, Art had the uh, X35 up here, and it was just, uh, yeah, she was she was quite, uh, what's the word, cluttered. So you couldn't really see out that window, which is, uh, it's quite nice that you can on this. Um, and I reckon this, uh, this has its side pillar further across, so you can actually see um, more than what you would with Art. But... Uh, yeah, no, we'll uh, get us started up, go for a drive, uh, go for a walk around, find out where all the grace points are, services, things like that, and uh, yeah, should be uh, should be bloody good. Alrighty, oh, so we'll go around it. So uh, obviously the reason we went for a, uh, a road track is so it could get out to three metre centres. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit later on. I know there's questions, people keep, keep asking why are we on three metres and what's controlled traffic. Uh, so the things that have been changed, these tracks are different to what the normal tracks are. So these are a, uh, a Susie track, I believe. Yeah, these are Susies. So they're uh, they're a more aggressive track and they uh, last longer than the Cases standard track. Um, the well, what what is nice? This is what they all they always do. But you've got your your clear oils. So got the clear caps for your for your oils on your on your tracks there, which makes it very easy to uh, see if you need to top it up or not. Um, Art never had that, and yeah, you're sort of guessing on <laughs> what colour the oil was, and here you can see it, and it's easy. You're like, yep, uh, we need to change that. Um, but yeah, walking around, she's nice and shiny and new. Um, I'm already seeing a few grease nipples, a few grease points that uh, we're going to have to uh, grease. Um, now you may wonder why we went for a a, uh, a quad instead of back to a two track and the reason is that the two tracks just scuff they just scuff so badly in the paddock that uh, yeah it just especially when we use this for chaser and driving as well uh, around going turning that close to headers and everything like that you just end up with big berms where the big two track turns um, so yeah, and then of course the big question, why is it red and not green? Uh, purely price, the, these guys were much better priced. So we, uh, yeah, we went for case and uh, the tractor's only got a pull. So I think it should do, a, should do the job. Um, but as you go around the back, she's just pretty standard, just a normal, normal tractor, six points for your hydraulics. Uh, you've got all your standard um, ISO bus connectors and everything like that. Uh, that there is for our cedar and yeah we'll uh have to adjust all the lights because all the lights are pointing just straight out so they obviously need to be pointing back um at least uh at least the filter is easy to get to just like what's on um on the uh what's it called on the ute and actually what i do like henry is uh 
when you lift the bonnet. What? It's light. <laughs> but I mean, it's still a bit heavy, but it's nothing like well, what John you'd Deere is. You'll never be able to get the John Deere's up with one hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I did see the new 800 horsepowers. It's like that. It's well, it'd have to be. They're very like, easy to lift there. There's like a half ton bonnet on that thing. Oh, you got it under you. Oh, it folds down. Yep. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's going to be amazing for blowing out. Whoa. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets hot enough, you can cook your eggs on there. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that's impressive. I didn't realise it came that far down. So that's going to make uh, harvest blowouts a lot, a lot nicer. Uh, yeah, for anyone who's interested in looking at uh, engines, there you go. Just your standard case engine, 500 horsepower. Uh, yeah. Here's the. Uh, it's, on this side. it's on that side. Ah, yep. And there's a filter up the back there, so yeah. No, we're very excited. Ash will be here soon and he'll do the handover with us and um, show us everything. So. And, I mean, you don't want to get bogged, but that's your tow cable there. So this thing here, come down, you hook onto that, and then you pull forward. Um, yeah, it just makes it a bit safer for when you're uh, towing something out of the uh, out of the bog. Uh, another question I know we're going to get: why, why these, and what are these? So they are what we call stubble mats. They basically knock the stubble over in front. So our stubble is normally about this high knocks it over and it just it just gives the uh the tires or in this case the tracks a longer life uh we end up with a lot of uh stubble rash from tires uh they just the stubble just pokes straight into them and uh classic like down here on a an actual tire not a track you'll end up getting a flat tire we get a few of them on the air seater every now and then because of it um so yeah, that's what those are for. They knock down the stubble so that you can actually uh, dry, well, prolong the life of the track. So we've uh, obviously got to learn the new screen, but uh, did you see that? There's cameras on there as well. Go ahead and see. So there you go, the camera at the front. Not that you guys can see it on here, but there's a camera on the front. There's uh, a camera on the rear, up top. Everyone who's got cases or New Hollands will already know this, but for uh, John, Deere, John, John Deere owners, it's uh, something new. Um, so yeah, obviously, we'll, uh, Ash will go through with us how to uh, operate and use the screen, control everything. Uh, we already know the uh, our screens, and then uh, yeah, we'll be hooking this tomorrow. Oh, sorry, on uh, Monday because it's Friday today straight onto the Borgo and uh, getting that out and yeah getting that ready to uh, go for um, for seating. So one thing that we also need for this is a name. So uh, Henry's got a, uh, a, a, a name for it. You I, reckon? I thought Clifford. Clifford. So the big red dog. Uh, my Mine and Rhiannon's vote is Bandit. So uh, we've got Bluey in the shed there and uh, if you've watched the show Bluey, the kids show, Bluey is the, the, the daughter, and then Bandit is the dad, so, you know, Big Red. But, uh, yeah, drop some names in the comments below, and, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what we like. It's going to be pretty hard-pressed to get me off Bandit, but... Yeah, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> since we named that one Bluey, Bandit makes more sense it, it now, got so. It got stuck, but <laughs> put some names in the comments, and, uh, yeah, we'll see what we come up with. Um, yeah, she uh, obviously needs a name. We also need a name for the Mac, you know, for the fire truck. Yeah. So we have to do another one on that, but uh, I just said we should call it the Mac, and Rhiannon's like, no, you can't do that. You've got to call it, you know. It's got, because we, we had the general for the other one, because they're army trucks. Um, I don't know if you call it the Colonel or, you know, something like, something that. like that, or just something completely different. So uh, get, your, get your thinking hats on for the name for the Mac, because we'll, uh, when we finally get that back, we'll uh, do a video on it, and then, yeah, get some names for that. So get your thinking caps ready for that one. So Henry's gone spreading. He's uh, only got 60 hectares to go, and then he's done for the uh, for all the lime. So awesome work. Uh, the rain has actually 
come down a little bit from what it was, which was what I said would happen. But we're still predicted for rain, so it's, I'm glad that we've got it all out and done. Uh, so yeah, he's got, he, Ash is still up about 40 minutes away, so he's gonna go and get that done while he can. Uh, but I figured I'd explain uh, three meters and control traffic to you guys for the people who uh, are new to the channel and that have been asking the question. Uh, so, control traffic is where you concentrate all of your machinery to be on the exact same track every year, all, all the time. Um, so we, uh, we want to make sure that the cedar, the spreader, the boom spray, the headers, uh, the chaser bins, everything is on the exact same line. And what it does is that means that our compaction is in the one spot and you reduce the compaction over the whole paddock by a huge amount. There's a percentage, I can't remember what it is. And uh, you, you can tell, so Henry can tell when he's sitting in the boom spray during the growing season and you got the crop growing, you can see where the chaser bins turn because we let the chaser bins turn to get to headers, it's just more efficient. Uh, and also the canola, we set our canola on the angles so you can see the caster wheels from the, from the, from the bin and the bar. Um, you can see a physical uh, drop in the, in the crop. So it is amazing how quickly compaction can affect a crop, especially in our, you know, our dry environment. So that's why we, we like to go control traffic. So now why do we go three meters? Uh, that is because all of your machinery comes on different widths. You've got, you know, two meters, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8. Some actually does come on three meters and you want to choose a generic width that all your machines are going to run on. Uh, now it's obviously easier to go wider than what it is to go narrow. Uh, if you chose like a 2.2 meter tram, you're not going to be able to get your header into 2.2. You're not probably not going to be able to get your tractor into 2.2. The front wheel assists you could. Uh, so you choose, you choose a wide. So Australia uh, in general has gone for three meters. And uh, what that entails is putting a, uh, Basically a, an extension in here, and they'll have to extend the uh, the drive shaft in there as well. Uh, boom sprays, well self-propelled are pretty easy. They can adjust their widths, so they can go in from, I think ours can go out to four and goes into 2.6, something like that. So yeah, that's, that's why we've got three meters, and that's, yeah, what controlled traffic is. Now, uh, one thing I'll note uh, with R and this, so another reason we've gone to, uh, you know, gone away from the two track with the scuffing, but um, I think this will have better power to ground, even though it's small in horsepower. So this is 500, road tracks can only go to 500. Um, and the reason we went for a road track, not a quad track, is because quad tracks can't go out to three meters. <clears throat> but yes, Art had a 36 inch track and these are 30. So you imagine an extra little bit of a uh, track out here you're, um, I believe that the problem with that was that it was too too much flotation. It was just sitting on the top of the soil. When you're trying to pull the big bar, it just doesn't do it. We had to weight that tractor completely down to get the uh, power to ground. Now this with, uh, with narrower tracks, we should get our power to ground a lot easier. And uh, who knows, I'm not sure what that means for track life. Uh, with art, we got 6,000 hours out of it. That's when we sold it. Um, so yeah, this I'm not too sure. We will find out together. It's a, uh, it's gonna be a learning experience. So uh, yeah, we'll find out. So I'll put the camera down and then the next time should be uh, us going around it and driving it. I don't know if you've played around with Pro 700s before. Yep. Uh, no. <laughs> but the idea is fairly similar. We've got seven customizable pages. Yep. You can put anything you want on any of these pages. So I've got uh, Ash with me now, and we've just done the big walk around and learning how to uh, change oils and what to look for and everything like that. And we've just gone through the screen and all that. And now it's uh, now it's the big test of uh, taking it for a drive and making sure it all steers, <laughs> <laughs> operates. We've obviously got to figure out the uh, the John Deere side of it, um, but yeah, that's something we'll sort out next week. But obviously, I've got to. Uh, Get familiar with how to uh, operate a um, a case now. So. Sounds good to me, mate. <laughs> Ready for the next one. Ready for the next one. <laughs>
How many your boom tray is going to be? Uh, Eight thousand liters. That's that's uh, that's yeah, a big we're working one. on that one. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's seven thousand by the end of the year. Well, that's all right. Yeah, John yeah. Deere aren't there, so yeah, true. Yeah, one step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I better put the camera down while I learn how to drive this and yeah. There she goes, the big road track. Um, very comfortable to drive, very smooth on the road. She, uh, she drives well, I'm very impressed. Uh, it's a lot different obviously going from a two track, which is like a bulldozer or a tank, and it pivots like that over anything you see, to that, which is full cab suspension and individual tracks. So, now very impressed with how that drove. I'm very keen to see that on the air seater, as I'm sure all of you guys are as well. Uh, next week I'll hook it onto the bar and we'll go over that and make sure she's all working. Uh, but yeah, we need a name. What are we going to call it? I still reckon Bandit. So uh, yeah, comment it below and we'll come up with something. But uh, yeah, also I didn't film as we were walking around because we're all we're all trying to learn the machine and uh, remember everything. And I didn't want to have a camera out in Ash's face while he's showing us around the machine. So uh, yeah, but no, it's. Um, it should be a good addition to the family for us. Got her in the shed, gonna park her away for the weekend. Um, you can actually see the screen now that we're not out in the daylight. So obviously I've got to learn all this. Uh, we've got to set all our, um, our uh, functions. And uh, yeah, it all seems pretty straightforward. It's pretty cool, we've got cameras on there. So that's the uh, front facing camera. And there should be a rear face, I don't know. There's a rear facing camera. So I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, Apparently that's a European spec, they like to have this all recorded, they put it to a hard drive for uh, all their highway driving and stuff like that, so yeah, no, she's, uh, she's going to be good for us and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing how she goes for seating, so we're very excited for it, um, should be good, so uh, we'll leave the video there everyone and uh, don't forget to comment below a name for it, but uh, you're going to be pretty hard pressed to get me off banded I reckon. But uh, there she is, ready for seeding. So uh, I'll catch you in the next one.